So this is my DR650. I'm just going to make like an impromptu video and I'll make a better video in the future. But this is essentially uh, just to sort of introduce people to my build. And it's actually, I'm actually filming it because I plan on rebuilding it. So it's, um, it's not going to look like this forever. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to walk away from the army look actually. And because uh, to do it properly, it's, it's a lot of money to get things painted properly, right? And uh, with rattle can, like the gasoline just takes it off, you know? So I think I would, if I was going to paint it, I would paint it professionally, and I'm not so sure I want to do that. So I might just literally black it out. I know that's so popular right now, but the popularity also helps me flip it if I want to step into a newer bike, because this one's at 35K right now, 35,000K, which like off the top of my head might be what, like 26,000 miles? I don't know. We'll figure out how close I was. But uh, yeah, it's got off-road tires. Um, yeah, these are the Kendas. I got them for cheap. That's why I went with them. Like, I don't even know really how good of a tire it is or how much better or how much worse it is than other tires. I just wanted off-road tires because I really did want to use this bike primarily for off-roading. But, you know, I haven't really done any off-roading yet to be straight up. Like, I'm not trained. I need to uh, take a course or have some friends teach me. But, you know, it's a really heavy bike to learn to off-road on. So I'm actually thinking about buying uh, a different bike, a small little practice bike. But I haven't done this mod yet. I got to build some plastic up so that it gets behind the other mud guards so that I don't spray everything with mud. Um, those are the stock uh, shocks. Yes, I know. They're going to be going, okay? Actually, geez, I'm not so sure. My chain might be a little loose, but... <laughs> um, yeah, so... Everything's just an army paint job for the most part. I did this seat by myself. So this is the original seat. And I, I uh, this stuff is unbelievable. It's called Spacer Mesh. And it's got to be the best possible option for a seat. Like, it keeps you dry. Like, in the rain. Like, all the water goes through it. And it's so comfortable. And, spa like, there's, like, a quarter-inch gap, you know, to either let air pass or whatever. Or, I suppose, like, even trap air if it's starting to get cold or whatever. But I think mostly it's going to flush. But, um, yeah, I, I got molly on it everywhere as well. Uh, I'm not carrying anything on it right now, but typically I have canteens out here that I converted to get, carry gas. So that's just the option that I have for that. Uh, these are all worn out and sun damaged, but I built these just to hug, use my knees to hug the tank and, and get used to that. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm going to probably buy something in the future because that didn't work out so great. I mean, it did the job, right? But it's just basically a piece of rubber I bought, and then I... Uh, um, well, I glued it on. You know that type of glue that's like, uh, you know, you you let it dry with both sides and you stick it together and it just, it's like permanent. Um, whatever that is, I forget right now. I can't remember. But, yeah, that's my helmet. I modified my helmet. I've got, I've got rails everywhere in case I need to add, like, anything. You know, I got a, a green light up there so I can read maps and stuff like that. It, see? So that helps me in the in the dark if I don't want to flush myself out with white light. Um, so I built that. It's not perfect. I would be nicer if it came around to the full edge, right? But I built that, anyways. And I formed, I formed all that myself. It, it's not perfect. It was just my first attempt at it. It's kind of a hack job. Like I got to get all new covers here. These are still stock shocks. They've got to go. Everything's been painted, but I'm going to change my my tire, my wheel size as well. Um, go more for an off-road suiting. I'm gonna go up an inch wider in the back uh, Sorry an inch taller like a wider a bigger rim and uh, I'm probably gonna go an inch wider in the front and more of an off-road setup um, I got a bag to put here to carry tools and, and uh, um, Tire parts and stuff like that. I just don't I haven't set it up yet So these are what I just added most recently. and I'm so happy with them. These are the double take mirrors with the ram mounts Oh my god guys straight up these things are unbelievable they will change the way you ride like they give you so much more confidence in what's going on around you um, unbelievable for the price like seriously like life-changing so by the way I apologize for the shaking this is as I said impromptu right so so yeah anyways that's what that looks like there that's my setup I built these in internals just so I could uh, you know have some protection and I set I set it so that it, it could carry um, um, what are those, man, I'm all going on memory right now, but I haven't used these bikes in a long time. Um, but you know those, those Rotax or Ropax or whatever they are. 
So that's all set up for that. And I, I've also set it up in a few other configurations. So I, I can get into more detail later on with that. I cut this out just to allow some breathing with that. Uh, man, again, I can't remember what that thing is called in the back, but it gets really hot. So I just did that to help circulate air and stuff. And I, I don't want to burn up any of my wires. Like everything can get so melted. And electrical problems are usually the problems, for, at least from my experience, that you end up having with these bikes. I also cut a hole in this side and the other side so I could access my seat and my, and my battery without having to take off my plastics. That's such a highly recommended option. I don't know why more people don't do that. And of course I cut out that as well so that doesn't get all gummed up. And uh, I've got a skid plate on the bottom. Um, I lowered my pegs, right? I lowered my pegs and I got oversized pegs. These are, those are just all Amazon crap to be honest with you, but they're pretty damn good. So I'm happy with them. Like this, this build was mostly a budget build. So uh, I haven't put a tool, tool kit on there yet. Like honestly, I just need to do it. I haven't done it yet. I'm so much projects right now, but yeah, this is gonna be rebuilt over the winter time anyways. Um, so yeah, that's what it'll be. And uh, it's going to be a lot different, I think. I'm, I'm going to actually improve all the, all the problems that I've had with it and uh, make it a better bike for me. So, but yeah, that's my DR anyways. Oh, yeah, like, and I did a whole bunch of stuff to the inside. Like, uh, I got it jetted right now, but I also have a new carb to, to switch out. So I'm going to put that on over the winter. I got, um, like, it's got a high output stator. Uh... What else did I do to it? A lot of stuff, actually. I, I, it's just, again, I can't really remember. <laughs> it's been a couple of years. Uh, also, I got I just put this to this new dash. See? So, this thing's pretty cool. It, was, it helped me solve a lot of problems, but, like, it's a little bit hard to see with the... Oh, I, I raised the bars as well for off-roading. But it's really hard to see, but, you know, it is what it is, right? Like, the, the bike wasn't designed to be altered in the way that it has been, but... So, so yeah, that's the DR650 with the big duck bill on the front I don't know if I'm gonna switch that out or not for the uh, I'm kind of an 80s child so I like that ugly ugly style but like it looks really good when you put the the bag on top of it and stuff it beefs like when this is when this is all decked out in its bags it's it's awesome so anyways that's just an intro to my dr650 uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll share more in the future okay and again sorry I forgot everything I haven't talked bikes in a long time you know like it's been a long time to be honest with you so I have my head out of the game for so long, I can't even remember the name of half the companies, you know. But um, anyways, thanks for paying attention. If you liked it, like it. You know what I'm saying? Peace. So some things that I forgot to mention. Um, hey baby. Uh, well, first of all, these are uh, dirt tracks. Um, like pannier bag mounts uh they're just made for soft bags so they're not super heavy duty but i didn't want to put too much metal on the back i still wanted to keep it as light as possible up on top that's nomadic racks that's their rear rack that's just the one i liked there's a lot of different options uh provides a lot of tie-up points though uh there's a retainer sealing seal uh like a retainers like a uh seal retainer piece <laughs> It's in here. It's like a $15 part and it can save your bike. So I got that. Um, over here, this is the stock exhaust. When I grounded out um, this really big weld on the inside and it, it uh, constr constricts the flow quite a lot. So that's been ground out as well. And uh, that's just a cheap way to, to improve your, your horsepower. And uh, on the other side, it's got an FM, FMF power core uh, exhaust mounted to it, so I'll show you that as well. Okay, so that's my FMF exhaust. It uh, makes your bike sounds like a motorcycle instead of like a lawnmower. <laughs> also, it improves horsepower and all around awesomeness in general. Uh, definitely recommended. Um, I, I painted mine black, I took off all the decals. I wrapped it in some heat shield and then put a heat shield, steel heat shield on, an aluminum heat shield on the outside as well. I'm not really a big fan of burning myself. I've done that quite a lot. It's not really fun. So I try and minimize that as much as possible. So I also added this fuel filter here. It's like a K&N filter. It's 
It's not super big, but it's bigger than the stock one that came with it. Some guys put really nice ones. I, I'm probably going to upgrade that too, but it's it's better than what I started with. So that's important as well. Uh, the the smaller it is, the easier it can clog up with material and affect your performance. So, Okay, guys. So this is why you don't want to rattle can uh, your gas tank or really anything else for that matter. If you're going to paint something, get it professionally painted. Uh, the gasoline... It just just acts like paint thinner. It just takes it away. So what you see there, right, the tan, that was the paint job underneath. So to be quite honest with you, it doesn't take off the tan. <laughs> so maybe not every paint, but, like, you have to get things done properly. Like, you need the paint that hardens with being baked. Like, there's a chemical reaction that actually hardens it and protects it. It's not just a coating, you know what I mean? So watch what happens. You see the tan? Now watch this. Watch. <laughs> okay, it made a liar out of me. It's already dried. Oh, there we go. See? It just scrapes right off. Oh. All right. I'm going to push it over my bike. <laughs> All right. Anyway, there you go. Don't do it. Paint properly.